I want to start with something unexpected. There's an entity that cannot be defeated. That's how the Guardian quoted Lisa Dalt, who ended his career as a Go master after losing to Google's Go playing AI AlphaGo in 2016. But why am I talking about Go when I actually want to talk about AI and art and the creative process behind it? About the possibilities and opportunities that AI or artificial creativity could offer as a collaborative partner. Because when I was thinking about the strategy game like Go, I collected some keywords, qualities, that I thought that might be important to master such games. And many of them overlapped with keywords of qualities that I thought are also important to do art, especially things like understanding, anticipation, and of course, creativity. And these are also topics on in the ongoing research in artificial intelligence and related fields like artificial creativity. And they are indeed a real challenge. Some people might even say that they are impossible, at least to reach the same levels as humans. And there are many reasons why they are so difficult. And I think the most important one is that our knowledge about human intelligence and resulting capabilities such as creativity is still quite limited. But still, in the case of AlphaGo, an AI model that doesn't even address these capabilities in particular was able to beat the best of the best. But now what about AI and art? If you ask artists working with AI, many of them might say something like this. AI is just a tool. And yes, indeed, it is, it is a great tool. We can use it to synthesize sounds and images, to analyze huge amounts of data, to manage sensor data, and much more. And in all these tasks, AI can be a great help and useful tool. But can AI also be a creative partner? How can we benefit from a machine and algorithm in our artistic and creative processes? Can we learn something new from AI? If we think back again to Lisa Dalt, I think he missed a great opportunity when he ended his career after losing to the AlphaGo AI. Because usually, in the case of Go, but also in art and many other domains, we train an AI with examples made by humans, strategies and moves, art and music pieces, and so on. But at the point when an AI is starting to generate new and unexpected things, in the case of Go, so good to beat all the experts, the Go masters, but also artists, or we as humans in general, have the opportunity to start learning from the AI. And in creative fields like art, this learning process can start very early. While we as humans might have our individual critics to evaluate art, an artist doesn't need to be beaten by an AI with better art to learn from it. We can start learning from each other right away. That's because creativity is always a collaborative process. We explore our surroundings, nature, previous works of others in search of inspiration. We combine things that already exist. We copy them and transform them into something new. We value a creative idea or work for its novelty and other qualities, but also for its relevance in our social context. So we as humans cannot create something new out of nothing. Our creativity is always limited to our own experiences, our knowledge, our social context, and more. And an AI is limited too by its computational power, the quality of the algorithm, the input data as training examples, the lack of having different experiences. It is unable to develop individual critics for its own works, to contextualize its work, and to evaluate the relevance in the artistic and social context. But it can be a good creative partner to experience unexpected things, to break as an artist with learned patterns, to create things from a different perspective 
and new knowledge. To challenge ourselves in a collaboration with AI systems. My personal journey with AIs as collaborative partners mainly started in 2013 with my piece, The Conductor's Philosophy. It is a piano duet between a human pianist and an uh, intelligent algorithm, both led by a conductor. The algorithm can react to both the pianist's playing and the instructions of the conductor. And of course, this also applies for the human pianist. That creates an interactive triangular feedback system. We will see a short excerpt of the piece with Gabriel Denhoff playing on the piano, the algorithm also invisibly playing the keys and both being conducted by Tobias van der Locht. So we have seen this dialogue between the human and the algorithm, call and response, how they both react to each other, how they react to the conductor, and how the algorithm is even playing a solo. There are several situations in the piece with surprises, improvisation, unexpected events, and the need to react to them. And then this constant resulting challenges and the unconventional things that came out of it I mean, it's already quite unusual that a piano duet is being conducted. That was what left me with a lasting interest in the subject. But how can we not only challenge ourselves to produce unexpected things, but also the AI? Is it even possible for an AI to generate genuine results when it often relies on human-created works as its training examples? So when you think back again to our AlphaGo example. AlphaGo became so powerful by first learning many million moves of Go experts, but then even getting better by just playing against itself. And its successor, AlphaGo Zero, even became many times better than the original one by just playing against itself from scratch. So by this, the system was decoupled from the strategies and patterns typical for human players and instead it developed its individual strategies and was able to surprise, irritate, and beat its human opponents with unexpected and unconventional moves. And these are also qualities we want to see in art. And I believe that here too, the decoupling of an AI from our human bias about what art is can be the key to develop new and genuine art with the help of AI. So I followed this approach also in the second piece of the Conductor's Philosophy series in 2017. It is a conducted laptop quartet playing a composition generated by an AI that was first trained with thousands of music pieces from different genres, but then only with pieces of instances of itself. And in my most recent research in artworks, I use genetic programming, a class of evolutionary algorithms inspired by the processes in nature to teach an AI to autonomously write code in a programming language to produce audiovisual art. This artistic practice, commonly referred to as live coding, is here performed by an AI that has never been trained to human artworks before, but only knows how to program in its own programming language. So next we see a short excerpt of the Kaka Cult from 2018 which is an audiovisual live coding performance where a human sends messages to a goddess-like AI in a chat-like interaction system and receives cryptic code messages as response which generates the audiovisual patterns we can experience. Thank you.
There are approaches in artificial creativity research working on modeling human creativity, making it computable in order to be used in artificial intelligence systems. But there are still challenges to overcome and to learn about the human cognitive processes that determine our own creativity. And who knows if or how long it will take until we can fully understand and model them. But perhaps we don't need to completely mimic human creativity when we can already have new and unexpected experiences with creative AI approaches. Things like real-time interactions, the decoupling it from the human generated material and increasing the system's autonomy. With all that, we can already today extend our creative boundaries. So I don't believe that we need to be afraid that we as artists, as creatives, need to give up our careers because there's an entity that cannot be defeated, like Lisa Doll did with Go. Instead, I believe we have to search for new and creative ways to work with the systems as collaborative creative partners. And of course, this will change our role and work in the creative and artistic processes, as it already does today. But it might also be the key to explore our limits and extend our own creativity. Thank you very much.